on the mound for West Effort is going to be very tall, number seven. Wait for the names and uh, starting positions and things like that. And I think Schulze's on that right now, but they're going to send Tyler Blair to the plate. And the West Effort Eagles infield is going to huddle up right outside the mound here. Umpire cleaning off the plate, and we are just about set to go here. Again, Donovan Casey on the mound tonight for Sterling. And right now, it is going to be Tyler Blair. Tyler Blair hitting 333 on the season. 11 RBIs and 14 strikeouts, so... Blair, first one up to face West Effort. As the PA announcer reading the pregame statements. Enjoy the ball game. And now we are we are underway. That's Tyler Blair. As I mentioned, leading off, playing left field. That's Castellano, the pitching for the Eagles. First pitch, lone outside, ball one. Next pitch from Castellano in the 0-1. Grounded foul down the first baseline, evens the count of 1-1 to Tyler Blair, the leadoff. Again, one and one, the count to Tyler Blair from, and now the delivery to, from Castellano. Right in there for called first strike, one and two. Winner of this game will face either Pemberton or Barnegat. Barnegat being the top seed in the Group 2 South tournament. Two and two, the count to Tyler Blair. The delivery from Castellano. Swung on and missed. And Tyler Blair is retired on strikes, one down. So first batter is a strikeout victim for Castellano. And now Andrew it's Andrew, Andrew Miller's Miller. center fielder. Miller entering the game. Batting 314. Leads the team in on base percentage, walks, and strikeouts. First pitch hit right up the middle for a base hit. And Andrew Miller is aboard with one out here in the top half of the first. Pitch went right up the middle. And that's where. Now Miller hit it, and that'll bring up Donovan Casey, the pitcher. Donovan Casey entering the game, hitting a very impressive 405. 15 RBIs on the season for Casey. Miller on first, and the first pitch from Castellano from the belt. Low in the dirt, blocked there nicely by the catcher for West Defford. 1-0 the count to Donovan Casey. Miller takes his lead off, and inside pitch again, 2-0. Great opportunity here for Sterling to potentially get some runs on the board here early in the first inning. Definitely help out Donovan Casey's cause. A 2-0 pitch. Swung on, fouled back out of play behind us into the parking lot. Fortunately, I don't think Schul's parked there. I didn't park there. Somebody hits a home run where I parked. That's about a uh, it's about a 500 foot shot. Two and one the count. They take a look at Miller back at first, and he's back safely. McGoldrick, the shortstop, waits on deck. Should Donovan Casey reach base? The two one pitch. Swung on, hit the shortstop, and the shortstop bobbles it, and that's going to allow Miller to go into second. It's going to be an error on the shortstop, and Donovan Casey is aboard. E6, if you're scoring that one at home. So 
So Miller on second. Donovan Casey reaches on the error. And that brings up McGoldrick here with one out in the top half of the first inning. McGoldrick hitting 416. That leads the team in hitting. And he looks at strike one. Leads the team in RBIs, runs scored, doubles, triples, hits, pretty much everything. Two men aboard here. Four Sterling on top of the first. McGoldrick smashes one into center field going back. And making the catch is Strout at the wall. And the runners will both hold. So a good piece of hitting there by McGoldrick, but the runners cannot advance. Just got under it by a little bit, Rob. I'll tell you, you know, McGoldrick's been the best hitter all year, and uh, he wants that pitch back because he uh, yeah, came within a few feet out there of uh, having Sterling up 3 nothing here early on in the first inning. That's going to bring up Ryan Smith, the first baseman. Smith entering the game, hitting 300. And he hits one into center field. A little flare and making the catch to end the inning is West Effort. But they leave two runners aboard. And that's how we're going to end the first inning. Sterling threatens but does not score. It's and I know the last trip we had down here, you, you had Sterling uh, leave some runners on early on, but then they just played some small ball, moved runners over, and eventually went on to get a uh, you know, sizable win. First pitch from Donovan Casey to Essig is fouled out of play, 0-1. You know, with Donovan, like we've talked about before on previous broadcasts, he's going to come at, come at you with the mid-80s fastball and a, a changeup that has so much movement, it kind of looks like a curveball. So, uh, you know, the Boston College, you know, the guy who's going to Boston College really has two, two very good pitches, especially for one of the best high, high school pitchers in South Jersey. Next pitch from Casey, outside ball on one. We'll get to the starting lineups for West Efforts. Jules, he did some, some great work there on the top of the first. Feverishly going to our right to a scorer's table to get all the information. Next pitch from Donovan Casey, high and outside. Looks like he kind of lost that one a little bit. but Yeah, and that doesn't happen much. I was just about to say, you know, Warren, you talked about the change up the fastball. The location with Donovan Casey is probably as big as anything. And you said, Rob, that one sailed away on him. Two and one, the count to Essek. Right on the outside corner. Great location there by Casey. Evens the count of two and two. I must say, guys, this, this view's a little bit better than the view we had against Woodbury, wouldn't you say? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the 2-2 delivery from Donovan Casey. High and outside. Gets out of the, the glove there of Jimmy Sales. Well, this view, Three two. Uh, Warren, like you were saying, it, it's, it's great. It's even better. We, we took the kids to the River Sharks game um, and did a game up there about a week and a half ago. And uh, this is even better than that. Right behind home plate, you can see everything in front of you. And, boy, what a great night, too. Yeah. The 3-2 count. And a pitch from Casey. Swung on, fouled out of play by Essex again. Still it stays alive there. And I'm sure, you know, the high school kids, they, they really like playing on, under – under the lights, it's a it's a game they don't get to do very often. I I believe they did it earlier this year, but uh, there's just not many opportunities. So you kind of feel like it's a Sunday night baseball where you know you're the most important game right now. Yep. Again, a three-two pitch swung on and hit right towards third base. Semarelio gets him. Nice throw by Semarelio. Yeah, that was a and nice. Ryan Smith picks it up for the first out. That was a nice play going to his left. It wasn't a hard hit ball, so you uh, you know you have to make a strong throw, strong throw there. And Smirly did a really nice job there. Yeah, they really like the way he picks it at third base. He's come on and played a lot more towards the second half of the season, and really done a nice job not only at third but with the bat. It's going to bring up Dave Strout, the center fielder. First pitch to him is high, ball one. And you know, Schultz, with when you have a guy like Casey on the mound, you're going to get a lot of weak swings. So you really need your infield to be at their tip-top shape to to uh, make make the easy and the, the tough plays like that. The 1-0 in there for strike one, one and one. Well, looking at that pitch, it looks like he's going to get those pitches a little bit off the plate, and that's uh, that's huge. That was one thing he was able to get last year when we came down here and uh, 
and did the game for Channel 19. 1-1. One, one. Lone in the dirt. Good block there. Nobody was on base, but still, nonetheless, good block there by Jimmy Sales. Now, that's huge, having a catcher that can keep his body in front of it. It, it really allows a pitcher to be able to waste a pitch. You know, and there's nobody on base right now, but when runners are on base, it, it could change how you're going to pitch. The 2-1 outside. 3-1, and one. Casey falling behind Stroud here. Good piece of hitting by McGoldrick in that top half of the first. Just wasn't able to get enough of it. The wind probably knocked a little bit of that down, but 3-1 pitch fouled off out of play. Full count. Well, one thing they're doing here, the first two hitters for West Stepford, is they're make Don making Donovan Casey throw pitches. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. You get that pitch count out up there early on. 3-2 to Strout. Outside, and he walked him. So one runner aboard here in the bottom half of the first inning. Take a look at some of the numbers for only uh, Donovan Casey. That's only his ninth walk and 35th inning at work. That's pretty, pretty remarkable for a high for a high school pitcher. Speaking of the numbers for Donovan Casey, enters the game at a 2.42 ERA, 52 strikeouts, and had 11 strikeouts in his last start. We actually had that game for you on Channel 19. Really impressive performance by him. That's going to bring up Eric Ainsley, the first baseman, with Strout on first, with one out here in the bottom of the first. First pitch is in there for a late called strike. And one of the many impressive things about Donovan Casey is he's one of those kids who can bear down and, and even gets better when runners get on base. The 0-1, runners are going, and it's a hit batsman. He hit him. Ainsley is going to be aboard. That's only the second batter he's hit all season. So turnabout is fair play here. West Deptford now has two on with one out. Yeah, was, nice job by the first baseman Ryan Smith, who caught who caught for him when Sales was injured, just to go go up there, you know, get him, take a little breather. You know, it's a playoff game. You know, they're high school kids, so you know you get a little antsy even when you're. A guy like Donovan Case is going to Boston College, so just, just needs to settle down and start throwing strikes as he has in the past. Teammates just picking each other up, right? Yeah. It's going to bring up Drew Wilder, the right fielder, in the cleanup position. Two on, one out here in the bottom of the first. Still no score from West Effort. Pitch from Casey outside, ball one. Didn't miss by much. I thought he got that call. Yeah, it looked like. Uh, that, but the, the second hitter. It looked like Casey uh, was looking back at the runner at second while he was in his while he was going through his his windup. That was, you know, that probably was the reason why his pitch was outside. Same pitch, same result, two and zero, oh. and now Jimmy Sale is going to come out and have a chat with Donovan Casey. Yeah, it looks like it just looks like Donovan's mechanics are a little off right now. So he's probably come, having his catcher come out just to kind of. You know, ask you know maybe what what he's doing wrong. Maybe just kind of get some help, a little tweak his tweak his uh, delivery a little bit. So play resumes now. 2-0 count. Stroud on second, Ainsley on first. One out and the pitch from Casey. Right, found the corner this time. Outside corner edge he got, and it's now two and one. One of the one of the great parts about Casey's game, when, you know, against Woodbury, was that he he could put the ball any any place he wanted, inside, outside, up, down, with both pitches, and uh, just looks like he hasn't been able to locate his fastball early here in the first. Two one delivery high and outside, three and one. Casey shaking his head in disgust right now. Obviously, uh, a little frustrated with himself there, Shulzy. Yeah, and I think the one, you know, you saw that when with the hit batter. I think he was trying to go high and inside and then go low and away. And obviously the one high and inside got a little, got away from him. 3-1 delivery from Casey. In there for a strike. Wilden <laughs> didn't, he, didn't like it. He was on his way to f first base on the walk, but home plate umpire said otherwise. Big pitch here for Casey, 3-2, one out, two on. The pitch just missed the outside edge, and now they're loaded up. 
for the pitcher, Ty Castellano. Yeah, he's and while we have a moment, we'd just like to thank the West Effort athletic staff for the accommodations here. This is arguably, you said this earlier, so this might be a better view than what we have at the Riverstars uh, game when we broadcast those. Just, just a great complex here, great, great atmosphere for the first round of the playoffs. Bases are loaded now for Casey. And first pitch from him is again high and outside. Ty Castellano, the pitcher, really help his own cause here. Could really break this game open early. One out. No score here in the bottom half of the first. Rob Strauss, Kevin Schulz, Warren Croxton. First round of the South Jersey Group 2 playoffs. Castellano fouls one out of play. And then one and one. Before Castellano stepped into the box, the infield met you know, with the bases loaded. And it looks like you had a double play depth up the middle. You have the third base, Smirlio, playing kind of even with the bag. And uh, the first baseman, uh, Ryan Smith, who's playing behind the runner, so he's not keeping the runner on. So it looks like, you know, a ground ball to third, they're probably going to either tag third or, you know, head home with the, with the throw. Well, Stafford going with the black tops and the white pants tonight. Sterling, the blue, and the silver pants, and the next pitch inside two and one well that's one if it's a hard hit ball to third you can get the tag the the, the uh the sure out there at third and throw it home for the tag if you have to come up you're going to go for the force at home right mm -hmm. away the 2-1 pitch swung on fouled off down the right field line out of play into the adjoining field next to us look out that poor little league field they're getting, yeah, they're getting peppered with they're balls getting bombarded over there, over there with these uh these mortar shots from <laughs> all <laughs> fans <laughs> must wear helmets. You didn't read that on the way in, Jules? Yeah. yeah. Two and two, one out. Bases loaded for West Efford. Castellano, the batter, the pitch. Swung on, popped up out of play right behind us. It's going to hit our roof, maybe. And I don't hear a noise, and I don't hear a smash, so it didn't hit your car, Shulzy. You almost have to think was there somebody on the roof who caught that? There, uh, I don't think it went past the roof. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's some pillows up there. Maybe there's a, a fan who made a good catch up there. We don't they know about. They were thinking about our broadcast. They didn't want the We appreciate the noise. that. We appreciate that. Again, two and two, the count. Big, big at bat here for Donovan Casey. Castellano, the batter. Pitcher against pitcher. Castellano hits one into left field for a base hit. It's going to score at least one. Stroud across the score. Ainsley in to score. And a one out. Single, two RBIs for Castellano. Helps his out, out his own cause. It's 2-0 West Effort. Well, just a great approach by Castellano. The pitch is on the outside part of the plate. Fouled off a couple right there. Then just turned on that pitch on the inner part of the plate. And uh, just like that, West Effort's up 2-0. That's going to bring up Mooney Garrison, the second baseman. Still two on, one out. Here in the bottom half of the first, Garrison fouls one off. Out of play again towards that little league field. That's a that's an unfortunate break for Sterling because that was a little that was a little um, parachute that kind of just landed a couple inches fair and uh, you know Donovan made a great pitch, but you know as the saying goes in baseball, stuff like that happens and West Efford finds themselves with a two nothing lead. Next pitch for Donovan Casey inside. Runners will hold one and one. You know, we talked about this against Woodbury. Um, and Sterling did a good job of this, scoring a couple runs early. You know, when, you go, when you're going against an ace like this, you know, you have to get to them earlier before they settle down and really find themselves. Um, and West Effort's done a really good job working walks and then uh, getting a big, big hit. The one one pitch right down the middle. Look like one and two. Change up right there. Casey trying to keep them off balance. Finally, Casey ahead of a batter here, but the damage has already been done. It's 2-0 early on in favor of the home team. Next pitch inside. Garrison ducks out of the way of that one. It's 2-2. Two and two. You know, they, they say this on, you know, the Phillies broadcast all the time. How many times you walk someone they come around the score? And uh, I wonder, I wonder if Donovan's ever walked two batters in an inning before, like he has this. It doesn't I can't happen often. Yeah. And high inside, three and two, another full count, and there's been six batters to the plate here. I'd say at least half of them have gone three two. Yeah, you know, it's the key offensively to, to a big, big inning is uh, 
you know, getting ahead in the count, getting good hitters, getting good hitters counts, putting the pitcher in a tough situation. The 3-2 delivery from Donovan Casey. Inside, walked again. The third walk of the inning. Just as a reminder, Donovan Casey only had eight walks in 34 innings pitch. He already has three in just one-third of an inning. Yeah. Winner of this game will move on and face Pemberton. Or it's either Pemberton and Barnigan, one or the other. Check that's the seventh hitter of the inning. Thanks, Schulze. That's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> Leave it to the math teacher to correct my math. I appreciate that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just here to help out. Yeah, winner of this game will, <laughs> winner of this game will take on Barnegat or Pleasantville. Or Pleasantville, excuse me. Yeah, wrong wrong uh, city that starts with the letter P. Barnegat's the number one seed, so you have to imagine if, unless something crazy happens, they'll take on the winner of this game. One and two the count to Matt Britt. Bases loaded, one out, already 2 nothing. Uh, thanks to the single by Castellano, the opposing pitcher helping out his own cause a little bit. The 1-2. Swung on and missed, and Donovan Casey battles back and gets his first strikeout of the game. That's a huge strikeout there. That's huge. I mean, they got the two runs, but obviously with bases loaded, you want to hold it to that, and uh, you know, for all Donovan Case, he's done for his team. I think now it's time for them to, you know, get out of this inning and, and start to put some runs on the board. That's going to bring up Josh Ziegler, the DH, and he, he hits one right over to Giambi. Giambi, easily easy play to Ryan Smith, and that will end the inning. Bases loaded were twice for the Eagles in that bottom of the first. And the first pitch, Castellano to Sales is right on that outside edge, 0-1. I, th I think the big thing here is from a, an offensive standpoint, Sterling can't try to get everything back in one at bat and, and feel the need to you know, overthink every at bat. I think you just have to come in there, um, you know, play, be smart with two strikes on you. Make Castellanos throw to you because obviously this is a situation where the umpire's got a tight strike zone and you have to be aware of that when you come to the plate. The 0-2 pitch. And it's, good, and it's good to get back a guy like Jim Sales who would lead the team in on-base percentage if he played, the, played more games. He has a 521 on-base percentage, so he's a guy who can work the count um, like he has now to even the count at 2-2. Two, two and two. Um, you know, he had an injury, so I know, this, I know the uh, coaching staff's happy to have him back in the lineup to get on base and kind of start, hopefully start a rally for the Knights. 2-2 Two -two pitch from Castellano to Sales. And low, and it's a full count now. Well, this is the type of a bat you need, you know, taking it to a full count, making Castellanos throw a lot of pitches. This is, this is the approach you have to have. 3-2 to Sales. Swung on, hit right back at Castellano. Easy play. He's just going to jog over to first and underhand it to Ainsley for the out. 1-3 on the put out, and that's going to bring up Justin Ford, the DH. You know, they always say how, you know, big of a thing it is to get the leadoff hitter out not allow him to get on base. And uh, Castellanos just uh, bared down there and did what he had to do to get the out. Yeah, made a nice pitch on 3-2. Justin Ford now hitting 283. He looks first pitch outside, ball one. You know, Ford had a really nice game against Whitberry with the uh, two run double. Um, really starting to turn around w with the uh, bat. Started off really slow, but kind of, you know, has gotten into a rhythm at the plate. One on one now, the count to Justin Ford. Inside, two and one now to Ford. Sterling in need of some base runners here. They find themselves in an early hole. Very unorthodox leadoff inning for Donovan Casey. Like Warren said, this is the type of game where you want to, you know, for all he's done 
for this team on the mound. You want to get some runs back for him, get him back into this game. Another pitch inside, brushes Ford off the plate, and it's three and one. A three one delivery. Ford hits it right up the middle for a base hit, and he's aboard. Well, Ford taking advantage of a real good hitter's count right there. And I think he knew, you know, if he got a good pitch, something right out over the middle plate, he was going to turn on, and he did that right there. And just a nice piece of hitting there by Justin Ford. And one thing I noticed about his approach to the plate, he was really hugging the inside part of that batter's box, and really crowding the plate a little bit. Yeah, and you could see that. Well, that's what Castellanos was trying to do is, is back him off and then probably go low and away. But, you know, was forced to get it out over the plate at, at a 3-1 count. So Marilio up to bat now. First Sterling hitting 372 in 17 games, has 16 hits, four doubles, and eight RBIs. And looking for nine RBIs here with Ford on first. Hits with a little flare, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Ford's going to stop at second, and a little bloop single into shallow center field puts two aboard. Well, this, and it was probably later in the game last year, I think what I remember most is what the bottom part of the lineup was able to do to produce runs, and I think you're seeing that right here. And, and that's been indicative of what's going on in this uh, second half of the season. Everybody's been contributing. Everybody at one time or another has come up with a timely hit, and uh, that's a nice job there. Nick Samarillo just getting the ball in play and uh, putting some pressure on Castellanos. Yeah, and uh, against Woodbury, the seven, eight, nine hitters had, I believe, at least six hits in the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with Giambri uh, as your nine hitter, I, I would tend to believe that this, uh, may, maybe not so much a one out, but uh, uh, maybe a possible bunt situation. Third baseman playing even with the bag, so. Giambri laces one into left field and giving a nice chase on it and making a diving attempt as well. Vickery cannot make the catch, but nice piece of hitting there by Giambri. That thing just traveled down that left field line. Yeah, he really turned on it. And we'd mentioned where you have a win that's coming in, so that, that was a shot, turned on that inside pitch, but you have to think after that, you're gonna see something low and away. Yeah. Giambri coming in, batting 277 in 21 games this season. Yeah, and for, and for Giambri, you know, you really just kinda wanna hit the ball to the other way to get that runner from second to third. This pitch looking for that inside corner, was Castellano did not get the call this time around. It's two and one. Yeah, went with Ford the off, on, off, God, was, off speed there on the inside part of the plate. Ford any, stands any, on second, Semarillo on first. Anything off the corner of that plate, the umpire just will not give. This pitch outside, three and one now. In a similar situation to what Justin Ford had. Now Matt Giambri faces a hitter's count here, three and one. Now this is the one, the only one you really want to turn on and go at is if you get something out over the middle part of the plate. Jombry checks his swing, they appeal, and he did not go, so base is now loaded for Tyler Blair, who struck out his first at bat. Yeah, that's just a real nice, uh, you had three guys here in the lower part of the lineup, just a great piece of hitting by first Justin Ford, wait until he got the pitch out over middle plate, lacing it up the middle, then Samarilia popping it over to second baseman's head to the right side, and great job of Jombry there, laying off that one on the outside part of the plate. Runners take their lead, full count, excuse me, bases loaded, one out, and he swings at the first pitch and fouls it back to the screen, 0-1. Corner, corners are playing in for West Effort, maybe getting thinking about a squeeze play. Um, and for the sophomore Tyler, Bla or Tyler Blair, you just don't want to, you don't want to go swing out of your shoes, you just want to stay within yourself and... He'll one, Blair hits it right to the third baseman, he bobbles it, Essay gonna go home for one, and he does get Ford on the force, but they only get one there. You'd have to think, smart play there by Essig. Had he been playing back a little bit more, I don't know if they would have gotten him. Yeah, well, in that situation, they had him up, and uh, good job. Just keep, you know, you get those tough hops sometimes. Yeah, keep it in front of you, not panicking, though. Kept his cool, got a hold of it, and, and was able to get the force. It's going to bring up Andrew Miller, the center fielder. Singled. His first at bat was stranded at second base. Miller leading the team in on-base percentage. I mentioned that earlier. Also walks and strikeouts. So two of these, two of those three categories you'd like to be mentioned in. The third one, maybe not so much. 
You know, Miller definitely gets on base, and I mean, that's, that's a, a big key. The 1-0 pitch from Castellano to Miller. Gets that outside edge. Yeah. And that up here from, you know, 100 feet away looked like a ball, but he's been calling it all night. Well, that, I don't know that Casey has gotten that pitch. Yeah, that, that was a few inches off the black. 1-1, one, one, looking for that spot again. Misses 2-1. Well, that's it. If you get it, you'll go back at it again. And... Uh, Now the 2-1 pitch, base is loaded, and it's a 3-1 count. Donovan Casey waits on deck, should Miller get aboard? Castell Castellanos working inside out on Miller, first pitch was inside, next two outside, and kind of tried to back him off a little bit there. The 3-1 to Miller. Miller hits one, and that's gonna be a base hit into left field, that's gonna score two in this game. Oh no, they're gonna hold, they are gonna hold. Semarillo at third base, but it's an RBI single for Andrew Miller. It's 2-1, West Effort. Yeah, great piece of hitting there by Andrew Miller. Going the other way with the pitch on the outside part of the plate. But I'll tell you what, good thing they held him up because that was a perfect throw. Yeah, and Giambri, the runner at third base, he, yep. he originally was going to was gonna try and score, but luckily he caught Hoffman holding up the stop sign the last second. That was a great throw by the left fielder. My fault on that. I thought that was... I forgot to color in my little yeah. score sheet here. I'm falling, I'm falling asleep at the wheel here on my score sheet. And that had to be a great throw. He had to charge. It had to have a great throw. You had the runner going on contact. So, um, you know, in a lot of cases, that's going to score the run. They're the second run. Casey a chance to redeem himself, and he fouls one off. It's kind of a check swing. So yep. Sterling cuts the lead, the West Effort lead in half here. It's a 1-1 count to Donovan Casey. Base is still loaded. That's a great job by Hoffman, you know, scouting West Effort and realizing that the left fielder has a good arm. So, you know, you don't send him on a play, on a play like yeah, that. Especially with your cleanup hitter up next, exactly. even with two outs. Right. 15 RBIs on the season for Casey. Hits one into right center field. That's going to add to his RBI total. That's going to score one. They bring the runner home, Tyler Blair, and Sterling takes the lead 3-2. Well, Donovan Casey helping his own cause. And I'm sorry, I said cleanup hitter. He's the three hitter. But, uh, but just a great, again, another great piece of hitting. You saw it from Andrew Miller going the other way with the ball on the outside part of the plate. Donovan Casey comes right back, drives it to right field, and uh, you know, what, a, what a nice job hitting and, and their approach at the plate this inning to get them back uh, it just speaks, ahead in this game. It just speaks to the character of Donovan. He really struggled in the first inning, and he didn't take himself out, out of, you know, didn't take himself out of the at-bat. You know, took the pitch the other way, hit it, and helped his own cause. McGoldrick now with runners on the corners, two outs, and Sterling battles back after a tough first inning. And he flares one into right field, going back underneath it is Wilder, and he squeezes it for the out, and that's how the inning will end. But Sterling gets three in the top half of the second. Proverbial shutdown inning for Donovan Casey is what the uh, Sterling coaching staff is looking for. First pitch from Casey in there for strike one to Vickery. And then another thing that we talked about is, you know, when you're towards the bottom of the lineup, you don't want to get too cute, you know, when you're Casey. You know, you pump your fastball, get ahead of the hitters, and then you throw your off-speed pitch, you know, to, to get the strikeout and get the weak ground ball. You don't really, you don't need, you don't want to leave pitches over the middle, but you don't want to overthink things like some pitchers tend to do. Ironically, West Effort got both of those runs just on one hit in that bottom half of the first inning. Just, uh, you know, Casey couldn't really find the strike zone, and I think he walked three in that inning. Um, and, you know, you just you don't imagine that Casey will go through another inning like that. You pro he probably feels like he has himself, you know, he fixed whatever mechanically was wrong. How both pitchers are approaching this game. And, again, it's, it's pretty consistent, and that's all you ask for. But it, it's definitely a, to a hitter's advantage. Rickery hits one to McGoldrick. McGoldrick fires over to Smith for the out. Back to the top of the lineup now for the Eagles. It's Ed Essig. Grounded out to third. His first at bat to lead off the bottom of the first inning. The 1-0 pitch from Casey. Right down the pipe. 1-1. One one. 
Just missed on that one. It's two and one. And again, a gorgeous night for baseball here. You can't draw up better weather than this. A little bit breezy. A wind blowing from left to right. Maybe even a little bit in, but it's been the wind's been pretty consistent out there. You can see the uh, skyline in the, in the distance. That's one foul down the third baseline. Samarillo scoops it up. The field, Fires I can say it's a yeah. quite, quite lovely field. <laughs> quite a lovely field. Siri gave you the wrong directions. And Essek goes down swinging for the second out of the inning. These two teams are about as evenly matched as you can get, and that's Dave Strout looks at strike one. Strout walked his first plate appearance. Oh, I like that approach to, run. to Essek. Essek had the open stance, and you see Casey just hammering away at the outside part of the plate. The 0-1 delivery. Swung on and hit right towards McGoldrick. McGoldrick's been busy. Fires over to Smith and just barely gets Strout. Good speed on the base pass there by Strout, but three up, three down. That's the Donovan Casey that we're used to seeing. Real good inning for Donovan Casey in the bottom of the second. I mean, you had some ground ball outs, and I think another big thing is you're splitting up that top part of the lineup, getting the one and two hitters out and starting off with the three-hole hitter in the bottom of the third. First pitch to Smith, ball one. Smith hits a little chopper towards short. Making the play for the out is West Effort. Got one of the higher on base percentages on the team. That was Matt Britt on the out there, on the put out. So I have to give some kudos out to Matt Britt. Went to Ainsley for the out. Yeah, Sales hasn't provided a ton of power with only one extra base hit, but is se second on the team with 12 walks despite missing four games. Sales rips one into center field, but getting underneath it and making the out is Strout. Backed up initially. Ball kind of died, just like, I mean, Jambri's ball, he hit down the line, it was foul, but it looked like it was going further than that. But, and we had mentioned it in the opening that you've got a win coming in. Definitely going to uh, knock down some balls that have a chance of getting out there. Want to know the count? to Justin Ford. And looks at strike one of four. Different approach to the plate this time around. Kind of in the middle of the batter's box this time around. Last plate appearance, who's really uh, playing in on that uh, up on the plate. 1-1, one, one, swung on and missed. Strike two. Well, going inside again, uh, you know, with uh, Castellanos being ahead in the count, after going inside, you have to think like he's going to try and go low and away here. He does go low. It's not able to get Ford to chase here. It's two and two. Two out. Probably got a little more of the plate than he would want there, being uh, ahead in the count at that point, one and two. But as long as you don't get a pitch like that up in the, that hitter's zone. The 2-2 two -two delivery from Castellano to Ford. Low and in the dirt. Bases uh, excuse me, full count now. Wish it was bases loaded. That would be nice. We've, we've seen so many of them tonight that it's... Yeah, a lot of runners on base. Sterling has left four runners on base. And Ford swings and misses for the third out of the inning. 3-2 Sterling here in the bottom of the third. You know, not, not to get ahead of, ahead of ourselves, but if Sterling were to win that game and that game were to get postponed Thursday, you know, that leaves, you know, more days rest for Donovan to go yeah. for that second round matchup, so... Whether, whether Mother Nature might actually help out, you know, the winner of this game. It'll be Ainsley, Wilden, and Castellano. And it's 1-1 one one now to Ainsley. And I believe the last six hitters uh, combined have, you know, been down, sent down in order. So it looks like both pitchers have finally found their rhythm yeah. and really figured out, uh, figured out what was going on in the early innings. Off speed pitch right down the middle for Casey. It's 1-2. and two. It was 3 up, 3 down for... His last outing here in the second inning. Strikeout. He has two on the night. It's one and two to Ainsley. Ainsley hits one right over to McGoldrick, who's been busy really all night. Fires it over to Smith for the out. That they're getting from the calls that they're getting from the umpire, and uh, he's in that good rhythm that we've seen from him so many times. 
First pitch to Wilden. Outside ball one. And then looking around and underneath us here, because we can say that's we're up elevated in this press box. A lot of alumni uh, in attendance over to our left. Rich Conroy, the Walsh brothers. Now it's always nice to see the the old players. I don't want to say old because they're not Come old, on. but the even even Warren, you're old at former this point. Player. <laughs> Come on, man. Ex players. Re, uh, they're not even retired. They're they're former players, <laughs> alumni, if you will. My ten year high school reunion's coming up in oh a couple my years. Ten year. You remember your ten year? I can't season? even remember <laughs> that. I don't ever remember the twenty year. I don't know what I did yesterday, yeah. let alone my ten years ago. But we did get here on time. And we, we did. Wow. We did, and we did not get lost. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to go on for at least another five innings, Warren. The so last we'll say of that <laughs> until the next time. Yeah. Two a one. Swung on a miss by Wilden. A nice healthy cut there by Wilden. Evens a count at two and two. One out in the bottom of the third. The RBI, RBI singles by Miller and Casey. Gave Sterling the 3-2 lead in the top of the second. 2-2 two -two pitch to Wilden. Check swing. Got him. Back to the dugout cool. knowing that it was a strike. Yeah. Um, and that and right there, pitch on the outer half, you know, batter had no chance. It's going to bring up Ty Castellano, the pitcher. Swings in the first pitch and misses. A baseball score, which doesn't really seem like a baseball score. Seems like more of a football score. The playoff score is coming in. Number one seed, Moorestown, just beat number 16 seed, Woodrow Wilson, 28 to nothing in the South Group 3. Wow. Call off the dogs. I don't know that West Stepford liked that call. Looked uh, a little out of the zone, but in any event, Casey was able to get the call. 0-2 pitch to Castellano. Swing and a miss. And Castellano goes down, so three up, three down. Sun beginning to set here in West Stepford as Simarillo steps in. Singled and scored a run back in the second. One and zero, oh, the count. Outside, make it two and zero. Oh. It'll be Simarillo, Giambri, and Blair. Score update: Girls lacrosse leading Paul the sixth, seven to two at half. Senior night for the girls lacrosse team. Simarillo hits one on the ground to Essay at third base. Easy play, and able to scoop it out of the dirt is Ainsley. Giambri steps in right now. Walked and scored a run in the second. Swings at the first pitch, strike one. Daryl Blair waits on deck as Giambri looks at ball one to even the count at one and one, one out here in the top of the fourth. The one one delivery. Swung on and hit into center field. Camping out underneath it is Dave Strout, and he squeezes it for the second out. You remember, Rob, he was, his pitch count was way up oh, yeah. there. He stayed in the game. and uh, yeah, So he's, he's one of those uh, rubber arm guys that can really uh, go the distance. Back to the top of the lineup now for the Silver Knights. Tyler Blair scored and struck out so far in this game. Two straight balls to Tyler Blair. Should he get aboard? Andrew Miller waits on deck with who has a pair of singles in RBI. And you know, in a playoff game like this, you know, pitch counts are almost thrown out the window. You know, in a you know, if it's a close game, you know, you're starting your race. Um, Donovan in the one playoff win where I think he went nine or ten innings. Wow. And uh, but again, I think in nine or ten innings, he probably threw less pitches than Castellanos did in seven innings, but. You know, Sterling at times got the Castellanos and uh, got runners on base, worked deep counts. 3-2 pitch, hit a, a rocket shot down the third baseline, foul. And the winner of this will face either Barnegat or Pleasantville on Thursday. The pitch, swung on and hit into center field. Is it going to drop for a base hit? It does not. Nice grab there in center field by Dave Strout. He lines out to center field to end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. It's going to be Garrison, Britt, and Ziegler for the Eagles. And Garrison looks at strike one. He walked back in the first inning and was stranded. 0-1 from Casey. 
to Garrison, the second baseman. Pitch looked a little high, but yeah. they got they got the call. It's 0-2. Warren, you mentioned about uh, you know pitchers going a little bit longer in this scenario, being a playoff game, and probably a lot of that you know you, pitchers going to be helped out with a little bit more adrenaline than normal. And Donovan Casey gets Garrison on. Go for some pitches. At times, it might be a little bit out of the zone that they wouldn't go for when you were struggling. First pitch from Casey to Britt. Again, paints that outside corner, strike one. Casey moving quickly. Next pitch, swung on and missed, strike two. Casey rocking the, the pink shoelaces that you could probably see a mile and a half away. These things will stop traffic. The 0-2 pitch to Britt. Hit foul, and giving chase is Cimarelli. Oh, it's going to go out of play. The 0-2 pitch, one out, and it's hit into left field, giving chase and cannot make the catch as Tyler Blair thought about making a run on it and hesitated. That hesitation. What do you guys think? It looks like I don't want to. Looks like he didn't get a good read off the off the bat. Um, Kind of, kind of stood there and then, uh, and then went after the ball. Looked like he couldn't read the ball off the bat at first, and uh, you know that seems like a routine play. But when you're playing under the lights, you know things like that can happen. And a uh, tough break for Blair. So will we that, score that one ahead, guys? Or oh let's, yeah, let's, let's, since we can't go to Dan Farr for, uh, <laughs> for the <laughs> for the official tougher scoring. scorer in the yeah, he's he's no joke. Yeah, Colonial he's toughest scorer high school in high baseball school. history. No question. It's gonna bring up Ziegler. And it takes the first pitch low and away for ball one. But that, that was a nice piece of hitting there by Britt. I mean, Donovan was going inside out, painting the corners, and Britt just uh, you know took the ball the other way that was on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, it looked like Casey threw a changeup and kind of slowed his arm, his arm angle down a little bit. Uh, so the, you know, was it, the hitter was able to hit the ball to uh, left. Um, Blair, unfortunately, couldn't make the play. That's the uh, first hit for West Effort since the uh, first inning, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. One and one the count to Ziegler, the DH. Ziegler hits one right over to Giambri. Giambri, a little slow roller, bobbles it initially, and does he get him at first? He does, but just barely. Well, Vickery, the left fielder, in the nine-hole position, hitting now for West Efford. Grounded out the short is only a bat. And that Britt sits on second base. Five strikeouts on the evening for Donovan Casey. Had a rough start. He's really picked it up as of late. Now he's going to look back to Britt. And he's not going anywhere. Nobody was covering second base anyway, but just a good look there. Keep him honest. Yeah, well, this is where you just, you know, you want your fielders. You see McGoldrick right there sneaking behind. Keep him close. 1-0 pitch in the dirt, ball two. Especially since in, in you know in most cases here, he's going to be going in on contact with two outs. And, and keeping them close can be the difference between getting a play at the plate if there's a single or getting them out or even having them hold up at third like we had uh, Sterling have to do there on one of the hits. 2-0 the count to Vickery. Right down the middle, strike one. Taking all the way was Vickery. Should Vickery get aboard? Back to the top of the lineup, Ed Essig in the on-deck circle. A 2-1 pitch. And right to McGoldrick's going to slip and try and make the play. He will not be able to get Essig, or excuse me, Britt. And on the error and scoring is Britt to tie the game at three. And that wasn't a hard hit ball, but it got to the right spot over just a little bit more to the left. And you have to think that Smirly would have been able to cut it off and make the play yeah. at first. But... It just was hit, wasn't hit that hard, and was hit in the right spot. Yeah, anytime when you're a, a middle infielder and you slip, you on a slip on a play like that, you almost rather just hold the ball in that situation than, than risk a, a throw like that where the first baseman Ryan Smith had no chance. As he hits one to McGoldrick, and he goes to second for the force out and gets Vickery 
The West Defford Eagles took a 2 0 lead, but the Knights fought back with a three spot in the top half, bottom of the uh, second inning, or top of the second inning, excuse me. And then uh, West Defford just got a run back to tie the game at three. And just like Sterling did, getting the rally going with the bottom part of the lineup with that three spot, you had West Deptford, as you see uh, Castellanos going inside for a ball, get back in this game, get it tied with what they were able to do in the bottom part of the lineup. Yeah, anytime, anytime you can get contributions from the bottom of your lineup at any level, high school, you know, uh, you know, Babe Ruth, any, any level, it's a big, big help for the uh, team and um, it looks it kind of, it looks like both pitchers have kind of figured it out. You know, it was a tough break for Casey in the top hit, you know, bottom half of the fourth inning on with the run scoring on the air. But he's been phenomenal since the first, and Castellanos has been just as good yeah. other than the uh, top of the second inning. Miller on, with a leadoff walk here in the top of the fifth. These teams are about as even as they get right now. Each team three runs on five hits and one error. And then Miller with his team leading 20th walk of the, uh, of the season. Uh, just doing what a leadoff hitter is supposed to do in the top half and then just work a count and get on base. And, uh, you know, as Philly's former broadcaster, Chris Wheeler used to say, you never want to walk the leadoff hitter. Casey in now, and the ball gets away from Wakeley, and that's going to move Miller over to second. Takes a look at third momentarily, but... Play resumes now, Donovan Casey, 1-0. Casey hits one into center field, giving Chase is Strout, and it's a home run! Donovan Casey, a two-run home run over the center field fence, 350 feet plus, and Sterling leads 5-3. What a great piece of hitting there by Donovan Casey. Out over the outside part of the plate, didn't try and pull it, hit it where it was pitched, and uh, wow, what a job by the, the big man there, getting him ahead in this game with one swing at a bat. Really, really has done it all for the team. Team with the uh, with the RBI hit earlier in the game and then two run shot. Um, anytime you get a high school yeah, player that can hit the ball with power, the you know the other field like that, that's pretty impressive. And that that wasn't that wasn't a high pop up. That was a line drive shot. Yeah, that really carried out there center field too. Clearly, a kid. You know, he obviously he's going to Boston College as as we see uh, the Goldrick get the uh, inside swing at a strike. Uh, strike on the inside pitch, but I mean, going to Boston College as a pitcher, but they they want him to also play some center field, from what I'm told. And obviously, you know, we've seen him out in center field. He covers as much ground as anyone, but you know, there you can see what he what he can do with the bat. Your best hitter, you know, your best high school hitters use all fields as any 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 of your best hitters, and you know, hit the ball, you know, on the outer half, you know, on a line drive like that. That's very impressive. And, yeah. uh, I've seen Boston College play. He'll, he'll get playing yeah, time. You were telling me that yeah. in your he'll, uh, internship he'll, out there. Yeah, he'll definitely get playing time. Well, it, it's one oh. thing to reach out and poke the ball to the right side, but have the ability. Shown why. One and two, the count to McGoldrick. Goldrick pokes one down the first baseline to Ainsley. He scoops it up himself, and he'll tag the base for the first out. Three unassisted. And now bring up Ryan Smith. Now batting number eight, first baseman Ryan Smith. Smith, second on the team in RBI. So did a nice job filling in for sales behind behind the plate. Um, you know, it's always valuable at any level when you get a guy who can play multiple positions yeah. like he has. Of course, Smith, the starting catcher the last two years, moved over to first to, to third base initially, and then moved to first with. Uh, Samarillo coming in and doing a real nice job at third and, and also with the bat. And then with Sales, you know, younger player, you know, the 521 on base percentage. You know, when you got guys who hit like that, you find a spot for them. One on one the count to Ryan Smith. 0 for 2 on the evening. Popped out to short and also grounded out to short. 5 3. Sterling leads on the two run home run by Donovan Casey. Smith looks at ball two. Just always when West Effort seems to get some momentum, Sterling answers right back. The 2-1 pitch to Smith. Again, low and away, 3-1. Hitters count now for Ryan Smith. Smith entering the game, hitting 300, 18 RBIs. 
Smith just a junior. He started last year as the catcher. The 3-1 pitch. Smith hits one foul. Look out. We'll get out and we'll get a measure. measure we'll get a protractor out. Yeah. Smith again laces one foul. Not as a 3-2 pitch to Smith. Low and outside, and Ryan Smith's going to trot over to first base. Just trying to get that 3-2 pitch out over the plate, located it on the hour to half, and, you know, that's something where you don't mind getting a walk right there as opposed to getting it out over the middle of the plate where Smith can drive it. Jimmy Sales up now, 0 for 2 on the day. How about the line on Donovan Casey? 2 for 2 with a home run and four RBIs. Mr. Uh, Do-it-all. The 0-1 pitch, blown away, 1-1 one one to Jimmy Sales. Ryan Smith on first base. And take a look at Smith, and he's back safely, easily. There's really no stolen base threat on, on the base pass right now with Ryan Smith. Most catchers aren't, aren't stolen base guys. So. <laughs> Next pitch in there for strike to Sales. Sales behind the count, one and two. Update now from the lacrosse. As uh, some folks said, ball two. So lacrosse currently leaving, leading PVI on senior night back at Sterling, 11 to three. Cross team having a, it's been another spectacular year. Good spring sports season for us here at Sterling. Absolutely. Full count now to Jimmy Sales. Ryan Smith on first base after the walk from Castellano and one out. Well, this is with, with Smith on base, you have to think that uh, Sales has the opportunity at 3-2 now to get something out over the plate because uh, with one out here, he doesn't want to get another runner on base via walk. Take a look at Smith again. He slides back safely. Trying to catch Smith sleeping there. It's a late game, but it's not that late. <laughs> the 3-2 pitch. Sales hits one foul down the first baseline. As always, great tech crew. Doing a fantastic job. Doesn't get the, the kudos that they normally get, but. They make us look good. Yeah, they do. Another pitch fouled out of play down the third baseline, so. 3-2 pitch to Jimmy Sales. Inside. I think everybody's kind of holding their breath on that one, but now Sales is aboard on back-to-back -back walks by Castellano, and that's going to bring up Justin Ford, the DH. Yeah. Justin Ford, one for two, singled and struck out. First pitch to him, fouled out of play behind us. Oh, one. Huge opportunity for here for Sterling, should they be able to capitalize. Already two runs in the inning on the two-run home run by Donovan Casey. A missile right over the center field fence. Ford looks at ball one outside at one and one. That ball did seem to carry that hit by Donovan. It just kept on going and going. Initially, I thought it was just going to be a deep fly ball to center field. It turned out not so much. Well, yeah. you look at the flag now. It's not the wind isn't, uh, I think, as active as it was in the early part of the game. It was a line drive by, by Casey. That wasn't a, you know, a pop-up by any stretch. It was just a line drive, and it just like you said, it kept traveling and traveling. Dimensions here on this field, 322 down either of the lines and 344 to left, and Ford flares went into right field. It's going to be a base hit, and all the runners are going to hold up while they're not able to get underneath it, but that was a base hit either way. Base is loaded now for Nick Samarillo. Your coach, yeah. your coach is telling you go, go, go. You know, you just, that's where you have to listen to your, your base coach. And Hoffman, I'm sure, read that, read that and was probably urging him to come along. But base is loaded now. One out. Fly ball, fly ball will score a run. Looks like the corner infielders are in. So, Samarillo so flares one into right field, getting underneath it and making the catch is Wilder. They're going to send the runner and scoring is Brennan. 
And moving up to third is Tolucci. So a little insurance run here for Sterling. They lead, now lead 6-3. Yeah, no. Since Mr. Farr's not here, we're going to go to you, Warren, as the official We've scorer. We've run everything through yep. Warren before we, uh, we commit to it. A little flare by Giambri in the foul territory and making the catches. Ainsley. Yeah, since the first inning, he's, like you said, striking out, throwing strike one, strike two, and really been on fire since then. Speaking of which, first pitch to Stroud is in there for a called strike. Stroud, 0 for 1 on the day, and walked and scored a run. This pitch on the inside corner. Stroud backed off of that, but home plate umpire called that a, a strike, and he's been fairly consistent. Must be something about this building in the outside, uh, the outside part of the plate. 0 and 2 the count to Strout. Well, Flair into left field. is going to get in there for a base hit. Flair corrals it and throws it in. Everybody's contributed at key times. Strout on first. Batter is now Ainsley. Looks at pitch on that outside part of the corner, uh, outside part of the plate again. Shulzy, I just looked at you and you're like, oh, I don't know about that Looks one. Like the zone might be widening out a little bit, of course. Yeah, your pitcher, a pitcher's going to take advantage of that. Owen one Ainsley. Same part of the plate, same result, Owen two. Well, that's it. They're going to set up outside there. Again, two times outside. You have to think at this point they might want to go being up 0 and 2 in the camp, maybe up and in. Just to mix it up a little bit. 6-3 Sterling here in the bottom of the fifth. The 0-2 pitch from Donovan Casey. Swung on and missed by Ainsley. And Ainsley goes down swinging. It's the sixth strikeout of the night for Donovan Casey. Drew Wilden, the right fielder in right now for West Defford. He's 0-1 with a strikeout and a walk. First pitch from Donovan Casey in there on the inside part of the plate this time, 0-1. Weldon, the lefty. So again, Donovan going to paint that, that corner. This time it's the inside corner. Casey is set. Strout's on his way to second to throw, not in time. And a stolen base for Strout. Pretty good effort there by Jimmy Sales to get the ball there. Kind of hopped into second base. And Giambri not able to tag him out, but it's a pretty good piece of running there by Strout. Yeah, and that's a little tougher throw there with the left-handed hitter. One and one the count. One out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Sterling getting six runs on seven hits. West effort three runs on four hits. <coughs> Wilden waiting the pitch from Donovan Casey. Casey looks back at Stroud at second. And Wilden flares one into Shallow center, uh, right, excuse me, left center field. And making the play is Tyler Blair. Lower part of the lineup is going to be a big boost. Castellano, the batter now for the Eagles. Looks at a ball high and out of the zone. Oh, uh, excuse me, 1-0. and oh. Castellano, a single and a pair of RBIs. Also struck out back in the third. Stroud on second, the 1-0 pitch from Donovan Casey to Ty Castellano. High again, ball two. Looks like, looks like Donovan's kind of just overthrowing a little bit, knowing that Cass Castellano beat him earlier in the game, so he wants to uh, make sure it doesn't happen again, but it kind of looks like he's just kind of throw throwing, kind of throwing and not really uh, aiming for his spot. 2-0 pitch from Casey. And on that outside edge again, he likes that spot. It's two and one. Well, Castellanos got him. I mean, it was an inside fastball he turned on to get that, the hit that scored the two runs in the first inning. Or second inning, rather. 
Casey trying to go off speed on that one a little bit. Yeah, off speed away. Three and one. Missed his spot that time. Strout stands on second base after the single and the stolen base. Two out. And the pitch. Low and away, and that's going to put Castellano on second. <coughs> First pitch outside to Garrison. Yeah, it just looks like Casey's been overthrowing these past past two hitters. Um, you know, you got your one out away, you know, just get back back into a rhythm Hitting that outside corner. Looks like he's just missing his spot a little bit right now. 1-0 pitch swung on and missed by Garrison. Evens account at 1-1. Garrison represents the tying run here for the Eagles in the bottom of the fifth. Well, this is what we you talk about a lot, Warren. When you get towards that lower part of the lineup, just go right at them. The 1-1 pitch. Just missed high, two and one. Sun beginning to set here from West Deptford. Rob Strauss, Kevin Schulz, Warren Croxton on a beautiful night for baseball and beautiful night to open up the South Jersey Group 2 playoffs. Sterling, the ninth seed, West Deptford, the eighth seed. The winner of this game will most likely, barring an upset, will face Barnegat on the road. Uh, should Pleasantville upset them? Either way. Fun trip. It'll be a fun trip either way. <laughs> well, Pleasantville wins, then we right. either, either one of these two guys will have a home game. 3-1 to Garrison. Again, high, back-to-back -back walks now for Donovan Casey, loads him up, and the go-ahead run comes to the plate. Huge opportunity here for West Defford to get back into this game. They trail 6-3. Britt swings on the first pitch line, foul down the left field line, and it goes out of play. Surprising that he uh, swung at that first pitch. Are you? Uh, I'm a little surprised at that, Warren. Are you? Um, some. I mean, when you have a guy, when you have, a, you know, a guy like Donovan Casey, you know, your first, the first pitch might be the best pitch. Well, right? I'm just with the struggles with command that he's had in the last two two batters. I just thought he might might take a first strike, wait for a first strike. The 0-1 pitch, low and away, and Donovan Casey bounces back out towards Donovan Casey. Like, you know, towards the bottom of the lineup, you almost rather have him take that first yeah. pitch. So, um, you know, it just depends really on the hitter. Yeah. 1-1 one one to Matt Britt, the shortstop. Fouls one off, and now Donovan Casey ahead of Matt Britt, 1-2. and two. They've only left three runners on base. Have the Eagles. Britt fouls one off the fence. That was the pitch to hit, and he just missed it. One and two the count to Matt Britt. Base is loaded, two out. Go ahead, run at the plate. The pitch. Swung on and missed. Donovan Casey strikes him out emphatically and retires the side. Nope. Britt fouled off. We felt like he put a little more on it. Then that last pitch, he just you know, threw a little bit extra on it and uh, he was pumped up coming off that yeah, mound. I mean he's a kid who's out there always composed, really has a great demeanor but he was he was psyched up after that last strikeout. You know it, it, this kind of reminds me of the 2007 run when the team won the South Jersey Group 2 um, when they basically got on Jeff White's back you know yeah. Jeff they carried you know they went on with Jeff White's arm and they went on to win a Group 2 title and it kind of feels like you know Donovan Casey's you know just saying get on my back and you know enjoy the ride um, you know, and it, it's unfortunate that if whoever wins this game, you know, you can't you can't go to your your ace in the second game because of you know giving yeah. the amount of days off. But you know, with Mother Nature, maybe Mother Nature can kind of help us out here and uh, you know grant us an extra day or so. It's gonna be Tyler Blair, Andrew Miller, and Donovan Casey, well, and a three and one count now to Tyler Blair. I think what was most impressive there was you had consecutive walks to two kids in the bottom part of the lineup and just how Casey recomposed himself. Times you felt like he lost his command a little bit and uh, did what he had to do to get the big strikeout. And then the further, you know, use comparison with Jeff White. White, Jeff was a, an emotional guy. You know, he was, you know, was very, very, sometimes very demonstrative on, 
on the mound. And, you know, you saw Donovan there after a big strikeout kind of emphatically, you know, get his team pumped up. And uh, Tyler Blair thought he had a walk there, but the home plate umpires had the last word. And on-base machine for Sterling this year. The on-base percentage over 500 and just continuing that today. But just to finish my point about Jeff and Donovan, you know, you have a, two really good pitchers and you just want to kind of let them let them be the, the leaders of the team and just kind of ride, ride their arms so hopefully we'll end up as a group two title. And Casey, I mean, we, we, I remember specifically him saying last year in one of the interviews that he, uh, as we look at the pitch right there in the outside corner for a strike to Miller, he kind of embraces the challenge when there's men on base and he feels like he, he gets stronger. And, and again, that's why you're looking at a kid who's an ace and he's going to Boston College. Miller swings through. Strike two, it's one and two. Donovan Casey waits on deck, having a banner night both on the mound and at the plate. He has four RBIs. The one-two pitch to Miller. Check swing. And just outside, I was waiting for the late, late call on that one. Just got the outside part of the plate, just barely missed it. Catcher was ready to throw it down to the third baseman. Two-two pitch. Now he swings through it and misses back-to-back -back strikeouts for Castellano. Well, yeah, a kid like Casey locates. You saw the bat right there, or the, you know the pitches he threw to Miller on the outside part of the plate. One didn't miss by much and just went right back out there and, and uh, located that fastball. Oh, one one pitch to Donovan Casey. Two straight strikes, both on the inside part of the plate. It's 0-2 to Casey. 6-3, Sterling lead. Yeah. Pitch low and away, ball one, but in four of the six runs have come off the bat of Donovan Casey. Well, yeah, at 0-2 right there, you're not going to give Casey anything at all that he can, uh, he can hit. The 1-2 pitch from Castellano to Casey. Casey hits one over to Essig at third, picks it up, rifles it over to first for the bang-bang play. Pitching staff, you do have to worry though, 102 pitches, you know, it is, it is a lot with two more to go. Um, you know, he's walked quite a few batters, he's, you know, so we'll see, but you gotta feel pretty confident if you're a Sterling Knights fan. And, and you look at West Effort as Casey throws the first pitch on the outside part of the plate there for strike one. Um, yeah, West Effort hasn't left a lot of men on base, but leaving men on base in key situations like that, late, at ga late in games, really uh, underscores that you have to take advantage of any type of opportunity you have against Donovan Casey as he throws for strike number two to Ziegler. 0-2 oh, to Ziegler. And DH 0 for 2 on the night with a pair of ground outs to second. And Ziegler goes down. He's going to be 0 for 3 on the night. They got it out. And right, right. He's gutted it out tonight. You know, he's walked four guys. He'll even tell you this is Probably one of his, you know, worst outings of the year. But to have a 6-3 lead going into the six, he's, you know, it just shows you his ability. First pitch from Casey to Vickery is in there for a called strike. 0-1. Oh, Ed Essig, the third baseman, waits on deck. The 0-1 oh, pitch to Vickery. And Vickery doesn't like the call, and he's just going to turn his back and wisely walk away here. But it's 0-2 oh, quickly to Vickery. So Philadelphia skyline right over center field, all lit up nice right now. Sun pretty much set all the way now as Casey again well over the 100 pitch count at this point. Probably flirting with the 110s, maybe even flirting with 120. And he gets another strikeout, victim back-to-back -back strikeouts. That's three in a row for Donovan Casey. Hitters take you out of a game mentally. Um, yeah, that's that's a, probably one of the keys to success as a pitcher. First pitch to Essig in there for a called strike, 0-1. And and you talk about the mental game, a lot of it also is based on how your fielders perform. And other than the one McGoldrick error, the fielders have been pretty much outstanding tonight. Yeah. And that's really helped, really helped Donovan. 0-1 pitch to Essig. Low and inside, ball one. Nine strikeouts on the night so far for Donovan Casey. 
One shy of uh, back to back to back ten strike outings. Yeah. Pretty impressive on a night when at certain points of this game didn't necessarily have his great stuff. But uh, yeah, he's one of the top pitchers in South Jersey for a reason. I'm sure. 1-1 one, one hit down the third baseline. Picked up by Cermilio, and he picks it up in fair territory. Guys, that looked like it was going foul. But either way, it's going to be a hit for Ed, infield hit for Ed Essig, and that's going to bring up Dave Strout. Singled, stole a base that last is his last at bat in the fifth. First pitch outside. And like I was saying earlier, if you told Donovan, I'm sure if you told the coaching staff after after the uh, bottom of the first inning, if he would have nine strikeouts to still be pitching, they probably would take it. And, you know, he's been pretty much outstanding. Yeah. The 1-0 pitch to Strout. Trying to paint that outside part of the plate. He cannot. It's 2-0. and Donovan making things interesting for him here. It seems like every other inning <laughs> seems to... Yeah. I mean, he had a nice little string in the second, third, and fourth. We was really putting it together, but... We have we do have some action in the Sterling bullpen. Should uh, you know Casey run into some more pro more problems? And there's the outside part of the plate. Casey gets it this time. It's two and one. Uh, you're going to obviously you're going to extend them a little bit more. You'd be in the situation that it's a playoff game, but you're going to have that number where you're going to just cut it off. I'm sure at some point. Three and one now. The count. To Strout. Donovan, See, you have to think that he might be laboring at this point, guys, maybe a little bit? Pro probably. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he's probably in the one, close to the 130 range, and, uh, you know, it's starting to become, It's for me, it's not necessarily about the number of pitches, it's more about the stress innings, and it's starting to become a more stressful inning, you know, with, with a runner, you know, with the, another base runner gets a runner in scoring position. Hit one right to McGoldrick, right up the middle. He's going to go flip it over to Giambri for the easy out. And again, crisis averted here for Sterling. That's no, gonna it's about the game. <laughs> when Goldrick swings at the first pitch foul, I was going to say, Warren, you came. But like, he, I, like he, I was He texted saying. me and he said, hey, is the snack stand open? I said, no. He's like, all right, my GPS just said. Uh, <laughs> That's not even close. <laughs> Strauss is relentless, isn't he? Yeah. Not even close <laughs> to what actually happened. But continuing my smooth transition, um, <laughs> <laughs> the coaching staff is going to have an interesting decision to make. Um, you know, Donovan's at 117 pitches. You had some bullpen action in the bottom of the sixth inning. You know, you, do you send him back out there? Do you let him start? I think you probably do, and then you, you're going to take it at bat by at bat at that, at that point. And uh, McGoldrick with an infield single two up here in the top half of the seventh. And Smith looks at strike one. Sterling getting six runs on eight hits. West effort, three runs on five hits. Castellanos, you know, over here on his end, I mean, not exactly sure what his pitch count, but it's got to be at or over 100. Oh, and Ryan Smith takes one right in the back. Two aboard, nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Sterling with a three-run lead. First pitch, showing bunt, bunts it over to. Oh, there we go. That's a he big, throws it into big, left uh, field. Mistake there, and Sterling's going to capitalize. Yep, McGoldrick's going to score on the throwing error by Castellano, and Smith over to third, sails to second. And, you know, originally I... Ty Castellano. Infield playing in now, trying to cut cut the run down at the plate. Strong a little bit more insurance here. A four-run lead now. So getting back to my earlier question with second and third and already a run across, you know, is there a point, is there, you know, is there a point where you have to think about taking out Casey just to save bullets, you know, down the line? Yeah, and I, I don't... I. I'm trying to think what the the pitch count was of the he went nine or ten innings as and we look gets, at another run gets away again and Smith is going to come in and score eight three Sterling now on back to back errors just about 25 innings of work so it's an interesting decision it's a tough decision for the coaching staff 
Ford up to bat now and hits one into left field. That should score Tolucci from third. And it is going to. A sacrifice fly scores Tolucci. Sterling now leading 9-3. Now just chipping away again with everybody contributing, doing what they have to do. And uh, looks good for Sterling. And it's just been a great team win. Obviously, Casey is the star of the game offensively and, and what he's been able to do in the man. Not the sharpest uh, as far as, you know, we've seen him in the past, but he just seems to have done what he had to do in, in tight situations. Pretty much phenomenal after the uh, West effort, you know, first inning. Yep. Samrelio steps into bat now. Inside, 2-0. and And, and you, you know, you see a kid like Casey go 117 pitches and I think a lot of that has to do with he's a kid who's got great mechanics not going to put as much pressure on his arm as necessarily somebody who doesn't have the great mechanics and throws all with their arm where at, at this point throwing this many pitches you wouldn't even be what you'd probably be more worried about an arm getting injured as you would be as him just being tired and not being effective and, uh, you know, Casey just, just has the, the tremendous mechanics. And, you know. Base is empty. Three and one the count to Semirelio, and he walks. Castellano having a rough top of the seventh here, and the West Effort coach going to back to live action now. West Effort did make a pitching change. And the first pitch to Giambri is in there for ball. Next pitch, high. Ball two. Far liked it up. When we got up there, Tad had us go on a run like for everybody. Far really liked all the complicated orders people would, would <laughs> give him. Every hoagie was distinctly different. <laughs> and he really, really liked doing that. Didn't complain at all. Not even a little bit. I'm, I'm sensing a little sarcasm. <laughs> Just a little Just bit. Just a little bit. It was fun. Two and one the count to Giambri. Inside three and one now. With Semirelio on first base. Castellanos night is done. He now is at shortstop. Giambri hits one right to Castellano. Goes right through his glove and into center field. And advancing on the error is Semirelio slides into third, and Giambri stands on second. 0 for 4 with a pair of strikeouts and a run scored. And now a hit, Tyler Blair. Now he's going to go over to first base. I'd be really surprised if they brought, brought Casey out now. I think that's, uh, especially yeah. with him sitting this long, um, and you, you just, you'll, you'll go to Miller to close it out at this point. First pitch to Miller. Inside, ball one. Donovan Casey, the pitcher, waits on deck. Should he come out? He is not in the on-deck circle as of right now. I would imagine they'd find a spot for him in the field. Move him to center. One on one, the count to Miller. I think a six run lead is pretty safe. Yeah. And there could be more. Inside, two and one, one out here, base is loaded. For Sterling. Two errors in the inning for West Efford. Helped this little. Spurt of runs here, and a hit by Miller into center field is going to score at least one, being waved around, and scoring is Giambri. And Sterling is out to an 11-3 lead on the RBI single by Andrew Miller. Sterling extensive. I've played Sterling extensively. They know all about them, and uh, you know they're not going to give him too much on the inner part of the plate. And uh, he just takes the ball, hits the ball where it's pitched. As we look at Sterling on a. Pass ball or a wild pitch right here. Get another run. Looks like the uh, West Stefford fans are starting to file out. It was a really nice crowd here tonight. A couple of hundred people and uh, 
really, you know, it's a different atmosphere. You know, when you go from playing, you know, in the small crowds that you're used to to having a bigger crowd under the lights, you know, it does it does play an effect on some kids' psyches. And certainly, seen a really nice job to kind of take the crowd out of it. Yeah, it even looked sizable in a bigger complex, a bigger place like this. So, you know, that, that, that's when you know you get a lot of people coming out. And I think, you know, it's nice having it at night where probably some people, some parents who might not necessarily be able to get there because of work obligations at a 3.45 or 4 o'clock game were able to come out here. Another pass ball moves Miller over to third base. So a combination of errors and Wakely having a tough time behind the plate. And a rope into center field by Donovan Casey getting underneath it and making the catch is Wilder who played over and scoring the run is Andrew Miller now a 13-3 lead and Sterling has officially batted around a little bit of unexpected here in this last inning but a great job all around by Sterling and Sterling was up 3-2 we thought this might be a pitcher's duel yeah. the way both pitchers were going I mean, give credit to these kids as we look at uh, found it off right there. Um, you know, at, at one point you knew you weren't – there were high expectations coming into the season, and you thought you could get into the Diamond Classic um, with a real good start. You didn't get that. You didn't win the conference. But give credit to them. They've gotten it together here and played really well from that point when they knew that the conference and any type of Diamond class – classic invitation uh, was going to happen and just played for one goal to get better, play better in the last uh, eight to ten games and they've really done it here. Goldrick loops one into center field for a base hit. Just falls in there. There's second baseman Garrison out there as well as Stroud and Wilder and nobody able to come up with it so now McGoldrick is aboard for the second time in this inning with a single. And they're the hits that are going to fall in when you're <laughs> going well. Yeah. When things are going down. And he started the inning with a single, scored a run, and now he's back on first base with a single. Ryan Smith up to bat now. And McGold McGoldrick's a kid who, you know, he's been their leading hitter all year, been solid all year, and really uh, got everybody to follow behind him here again in this second half of the season. Going to try and walk on at Virginia Tech next year. Yep. Oh, and two quickly. You know when you're when you're to Ryan hit, Smith. When you're hitting uh, 416, you know that's you're a good hitter with an OPS over a thousand. So hopefully he can find his way onto the uh, onto the roster. A lot of pitchers who've been drafted. You know, seven, the biggest thing for me. I'm sorry to cut you off. Is seven okay. strikeouts in 87 plate appearances. That's just a sign of a guy, you know who. Puts the ball in play. Yeah. Ryan Smith back-to-back -back hits in the back, so he's going to need some icy hot. Reached on an error, scored a run in this inning. McGoldrick on second. Smith at first. You know, and it was interesting, you know, Sales' bunt, you know, at the time you were, wa you were wondering, why would you bunt? You know, a guy who's hitting three over 300, but you know, Castellanos threw the ball in the left field and really got the really got the ball rolling in the inning. 13 to three, Sterling has erupted in this inning for seven runs, mostly doing part two a bevy of errors by West Effort, and this one hit to Garrison at second, and the inning is over. Sterling does put seven runs across the plate. And that, and, and I'm assuming going against a 16th seed, they probably didn't throw their number one today. Um, but if they did, then they'd be in the same situation where he could pitch again on, on Friday also. So, mm -hmm. Connor Coggan going to step in now for West Effort, replacing Eric Ainsley. I would one quickly to Goggin. Swing and a miss. Strike two. little surprised that um, Casey's out there for the seventh inning, but considering that if the game was on Thursday, he couldn't go anyway, I'm guessing the coaching staff probably figured, you know what, might as well let him finish what he started because 
honestly, other than the first inning, he's been outstanding. I think uh, West Effort might have three hits since the uh, first inning. Three, four hits, maybe. It is four hits. Yeah, yeah four hits. He's been yep. You know, only one or two walks since that inning. He's yeah. been you know really outstanding. The one-two pitch from Casey to Goggin. Thought he had that one. It was low and away. Two and two, the count. This will be a rally of epic proportions. There, uh, there was one Sunday night game that I saw a while back, and it was between C called third strike for Casey. I guess about seven years ago, six, seven years ago. I don't know if it was you were there or right after you left, there was a game in Woodstown. They were up by a certain amount and uh, only have Woodstown come back. But I, I think that might have been a year where they had pitchers who had trouble, you know, throwing strikes. But um, now yeah, they're. Drew Wilden in now for the Eagles. in control here. 0 for 2 on the night with a strikeout and a walk. You don't lose sleep over that, do you? Every night I think <laughs> about it. <laughs> one and one on the count to Wilden. Pitch right in there for a strike, one and two. And then, of course, the next year they go on to win the South Jersey Group 2 title, so not bitter about that whatsoever. No, not at all. Why should you be? <laughs> <laughs> one and two to the count to Wilden, one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a miss. The strikeout number 11 for Connor, it's Donovan Casey. I almost said Connor Casey. I don't know why. I'm so used to the Philadelphia Union. Donovan Casey's 11th strikeout of the night. Speaking of the Union, they uh, finally ended that losing streak. And uh, yeah, it's the number one team. Yeah. Then, then they went out and, and uh, they, lost again. Yeah, they did. I was there for that. Ty Castellano, the pitcher, has two of the three runs batted in for the Eagles tonight. Last chance time for the Eagles. Sterling is going to move on and face either Pleasantville, the 16th seed, or Barney get the number one seed on Thursday. First pitch by Castellano. Fouled out of play behind us and into a field behind us. And, and delay or hang in there with and, uh, and get the game in. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. The 0-1 pitch is now an 0-2 count to Castellano. Eagles down to their last strike. In any event, and, you know, if, you, if you're going to have somebody else go, you've got to feel confident in Andrew Miller going out there, um, you know, especially if they make plays on defense, hit the ball. The 0-2 pitch to Castellano. Called third strike, five in a row, and 12 for the game is Donovan Casey on the strikeouts. Sterling... Defeats West Effort 13 to three. They're going to move on to the second round and face either Barnegat or Pleasantville. Just after after the first inning, what more can you really say about Donovan Casey? You know, ends with five consecutive strikeouts, two consecutive outings with more than 11 strikeouts in the game. So just you know, big players make big plays in big games. I believe Deion Sanders came up with that big quote, and that's that's what happened today. Well, he was obviously the MVP of the game, but you know, again, you have to like what everybody else was able to contribute and do both defensively and uh, and with the bat. Yeah, um, Casey also finished with four RBIs, hit a home run in the game. You know, you want your big players to step up in the playoffs, you know, with the NHL playoffs and NBA playoffs. You know, you always see the big players come up in the big spots, and Casey came up huge here tonight. So Sterling will move on and face either Barney get the top seed or Pleasantville. We'll have more information on that for you. What we're going to do is we're going to get off to a quick break. When we get back from the break, we'll wrap this one up and have post-game show. Sterling wins this one 13-3. Boy, I'll tell you what, what an offensive. Obviously, Donovan Casey did the job, but you guys came on, scored runs. It seems like that's been the story of your team who struggled earlier in the year, but the second half of the year, the offense has really gotten it together. What do you think has been the key? It's just we've been hitting a lot of practice and just doing it all the time, and ever since – I think it was the Haddonfield game. We just had a spark, and everyone was uh, hitting the ball now, and it's just everyone's coming together at the good times, and we're just getting runs, producing runs that way. Yeah, and it looks like – it seems like the turnaround in you guys, your team overall really happened once you knew – obviously you weren't able to do the Diamond Classic, um, had a tough start, conference was out. But what was said about going 
for the uh, playoffs as a goal. And it seems like at that point, you guys turned it around. Yeah, once we knew we weren't winning the conference or going to the Diamond Classic, we uh, knew we had to focus on playoffs. And we just worked hard every day at practice and just focused on that and knew, focused on who we were going to play the first round and just came out hard and played good. You know, you know, we're hitting on the offensive part here. Talk about the approaches of the hitters now. It looks like you guys are going the other way. Really having better at bats in the second part of the season. Is that is it the mental approach to the plate have a lot to do with it? Yeah, definitely. We're doing a we're getting a lot of two strike hits. We're uh, our coaches have been telling us to choke up on the bat a little bit and just put everything right side, touch the ball, and that's what that's what that's what we've been doing. And it's been good. Ryan, thanks for coming on with us. Congratulations on a big win and best of luck yeah, on Thursday. Sure. Okay, pal. And we have, uh, okay, that's it. We'll take it back to Mr. Strauss here to uh, wrap things up. Scurrying real quick here, Donovan Casey, getting a lot of different interview requests. Hey, uh, great job on the mound. Um, what was the key to you getting out of a couple of those tough innings? How did you feel out there, and what got you through it? Um, I was a little wild. Didn't hit my spots, uh, of course. But um, umpire had a pretty good strike, and he was consistent. Um, was kind of my fault for getting a little frustrated. But he was consistent, but uh, I was just missing my spots. Getting down early in the game, what did you say to your team after that first inning? We got to battle back. We pretty much got to fight. They're not going to get, they're not going to lay down. We got to fight. And obviously, you've been there for your team the whole year. How good does it feel for your team after the tough start to battle back for you? Um, it, it's it's going to be a momentum builder. I can tell you that. Um, our hitting picked it up real well. Um, they, West Effort's a real good team. They can, they can hit the ball, but we just we had the upper hand today. Donovan, thanks for coming along with us, and uh, best of luck the rest of the way, pal. Thank you.